Hey guys, we got some circuit play going on today. We're going to talk about the class B and negative feedback. Now here is a class B output stage. And uh, let's go back to our basic transistor here, explain it a little bit. This is a bipolar NPN junction transistor. And uh, as you remember, the base to emitter junction forms a diode type junction. And just like a regular diode, you have to exceed a certain forward voltage before it conducts. Of course, a transistor is more complex inside. But once we exceed that level, the collector current starts flowing. And that's what gives its, the transistor its ability con to control a larger current, or in other words, amplify. Problem is now, if we just put a, a audio signal on the transistor, there would be no conduction until the audio signal became greater than that 0.7 volts. And that would be a very heavy nonlinearity and heavy distortion. Now back to a push-pull output stage. You have our positive and negative supply. And notice here we have the emitters tied together and the bases tied together. Well, with our NPN transistor, we want to put a bias of 0.7 volts. And with the uh, PNP transistor, you need a negative 0.7 volts. Well, and again, those are relative to the emitters, and the emitters are tied together, bases are tied together, so there's no way to have the positive and negative voltage on the same line here. So we can't have a bias on this circuit here. So it's a pure class B. Well, let me explain this a little bit more in depth using a waveform. We have a time versus amplitude graph here of a sine wave. We have your plus and minus 0.7 volts, and we get no output between those two thresholds. So as you see here, in the area between those two thresholds, the transistors are completely turned off. That's a pretty heavy nonlinearity, and you get heavy distortions. Now above that level, the transistor conducts, and we get a little bit of the waveform showing. But obviously, that's going to have heavy distortion. It's going to sound terrible. That's why we add the bias current to our uh, audio output stages. It gets rid of this threshold, and we get a nice pure sine wave at the output. So uh, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully I explained that pretty well. But now I'm going to actually give you a demonstration of how terrible that sounds. I have a class A, or I'm sorry, class B, pure class B output stage right here. The emitters and bases are tied together and it connects to the speaker. Um, this thing here is only providing my positive and negative supply voltage. Now, I covered this up. I do have an amplifier in front of this, and that's mainly because the output of my music player does not have enough amplitude to exceed this, these threshold voltages, and you won't hear anything. So I had to put an amplifier in there. Plus, I need it for the rest of the circuit when we talk about negative feedback. Right, let's uh, power this thing up, play some music. Well, that sounds pretty horrible. And as I turn the volume lower, less of the signal is able to exceed that threshold, and you just got more, even more of a, you know, it's just a crackly, nasty sound. I almost forgot. I wanted to hook up my function generator and put a sine wave into the amplifier circuit. 
and there is the output. A little bit jittery, but it looks a lot like the blue waveform here. You can see those dead times that cause the heavy distortion. Okay, negative feedback. I won't get into a real in-depth description of it, but what it basically does is linearize our circuit. Well, if you play with uh, op amps and things like that, you might think, well, we use it to set the gain. Well, yeah, that's, it does do that. But its main purpose is to give up some gain in exchange for linearity. In other words, much improved harmonic distortion. Or I should say lowered harmonic distortion. So what a negative feedback um, sig or a circuit here is, we have two resistors and they simply act as a voltage divider. We don't want to send the full amount of output back or the gain will fall to one. So what we do is we select resistors and that gives us the amount of voltage uh, of the signal that we want to send back to the inverting input. So that's called negative feedback. And again, that improves distortion. So what I did is I took this and moved it over here to the output. Okay, I just drew it in there. So what I did is I've taken that circuit, moved it to the output of the class B stage. So the this output stage is now enclosed in the feedback loop. And that should improve the linearity of the circuit. Let's see what happens. That looks like a pretty good sine wave to me. But wait, that is a class B output stage. How in the heck? Well, this amplifier must be feeding this class B output stage one heck of a corrective signal. So let's hook it up. Let's move the um, oscilloscope to the output of that op amp and measure and uh, take a look at the uh, waveform. Oh yeah. So what it's doing, that thing is slewing like a boss to correct that crossover distortion. Let's see what it sounds like music-wise. I'm going to plug in my music player again. Okay. Wow, sounds pretty good. Well, would I make an amplifier like this? No, not really. It's not as good as it seems. Now, some types of music, if I play piano music, you would kind of hear kind of a fuzzy sound to it. And what I'll do is I'll uh, connect this thing up to my computer and pipe in some signal. You can actually hear kind of a uh, fuzziness to it. I can actually improve this thing and make it more listenable, but it makes a lot more sense to build a class AB output stage. Why would you want to correct for a such a horrible nonlinearity in the circuit when it really doesn't have to be there? But anyway, that was some fun just playing around with the circuit today and uh let me put up that some of that piano music in there. See if you can hear that distortion any.